everybody, and welcome to the Daily News right here on Canadian Football Perspective. I'm Marshall Ferguson, and I can't believe that we're headed towards double-digit weeks in the Canadian Football League already. Um, Wild. And I also don't know how I'm up to date on all of my like data tracking stuff because every year previous, I've had to hit like a game or a week where there's only three games, and at that point, I'm like, oh, thank God, I can like breathe, and I'll go back and, but somehow. Despite having a son who is turning two years old in about a, a month and a half, I'm up to date on all of my tracking. And I literally woke up on Monday morning this week and I was just like, I got nine weeks of information on all these teams. That is wild. I, do do <laughs> well, not know. getting better at it. That's I what don't it know. Is. There's, something is, uh, is evolving there. Happy birthday to your little man as well. I saw that was a great post of uh, him having fun bouncing around. Did you guys do anything fun for the, for the birthdays? I know it's birthday month over there in the Daily Household. Yeah, it is. Yeah, my daughter's coming up. Her birthday's at the end of the month, too. So it's funny because they're at the age now where they enjoy presents. So yeah. we got them like we got the family over and, you know, everyone brought presents. And usually, you know, you have the food and then you have the cake and then you do the presents after. Well, you can't tell a four and a three year old that because all they do is they see the presents. And Levi literally was sitting beside me going, going when can we open the presents? Oh, when can dude. I open the presents? When can I end like? You know, it's it's awesome because they're just ripping through the presents, and I, and I love it because they're not saying thank you to anybody. I'm trying to get a hold of them, and being like, "Hey, you have to say thank you to Grandma and Grandpa." Hey, you have to say that, and they're just like, "Nope, nope, 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 nope." We're ripping through it all. So I'm taking all the cards. I'm just reading the cards by myself, being like, "Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys." <laughs> why do Why do we not read cards as children? Like it's it's just ingrained in you that it's hey. like. Oh, hey, that card doesn't mean anything. Why do we still do cards? Ah, uh, because I think there's they mean some. I actually have a. I'm old do fashioned. I'm going, old fashioned like going this. Going okay? to a place where Hallmark has decided to, you know what? I'm going to write this little. No, bit. dude, papyrus is where you got to go. That's you got to get the nice cards. Yeah, never, never heard of that. They're available at Fortinos <laughs> in the Hamilton area. Papyrus are the nice ones. So I think they're in Shoppers. They might be as well. But um, I'm <laughs> I'm old school like this. I. Uh, I, I specifically went to Michael's to find a card storage box. So I have a box that's like built for just cards that you can separate by like year or by like Valentine's or Christmas or all that kind of stuff. Um, I have a problem, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, God. <laughs> See? See, <laughs> my son is sick and he gave it to me um oh. I, I coughed into the microphone that's a five dollar fine i'll pay it when i get a chance um <laughs> but yeah i i have that and honestly sometimes i will just randomly go into that box for a moment of fun sentimental stuff and be able to <laughs> like but, open it up and see like hey a couple months ago but how, like, half the people that give you cards, if they're going to give you a card, don't they just say, like, they give you the card, it's whatever's written in it is there, and then mm-hmm. they just go, love so-and-so. And that's it. And it's like, okay. I know. Why do you, I have to Well, do you want to talk about kids not, um, not caring <laughs> about things that people are trying to do that are nice for them? I took my son to the Ripley's Aquarium on Sunday. And we were sitting there eating our grapes and goldfish. Not supposed to have outside food, but F them. Uh, and <laughs> and we're sitting there snacking away. I'm not going to the Ripley's Aquarium Cafe to pay twenty five dollars for a no, slice of pizza. Get out of here. Um, and so we're snacking away, and this, these grandparents come in with uh, with with these two kids. And there's a playground at the Ripley's Aquarium. That's just like every playground that you would ever see at any park in Ontario. And surrounding that playground is like sharks and swordfish and stingrays <laughs> and octopus and like all these amazing things the exhibits are incredible all it's just it's a great time it's just totally like it i'm i, I it made me feel happy to see him just like in awe of all of these things right yeah, and yeah. these these kids must have been like somewhere between six and eight years old two boys they walk through and their grandma goes oh wow boys look a turtle they're like five seconds through the gate they're like turtle and the boy goes, I just want to go to the playground. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, I dude. shit about yeah. these fish. <laughs> like, to the I got to tell you, there's a way less expensive way for you to go to a playground. It's outdoors <laughs> anywhere you want. And it doesn't involve a $44 entrance fee to, to go to the playground that's fish themed. So, uh, Let me, uh, so 
also, you know, last we are the tie cats game. So I'm, I'm encroaching yeah. on your territory even more now. Yeah. So I got asked to do the, uh, the pre intermission and post game with Bob O'Neill, who, if you have, if you haven't had the chance to listen to Bob O'Neill, he's really good at what he does. Um, but I got to break down that game. I did the post game one time before the season, mm-hmm. but at the end of every game, we have to ask Coach O a question. <laughs> and the, luckily, the first game I did is when they went against Ottawa. This game to do because it's always it's it's that's part of the deal is Coach O always hops on and we all ask him a question. And he's right. going to answer the question. And I feel so bad for O because I know in his mind, he's like, you know, they had a tough loss against the Argos, right? Another like come from yeah. behind. And he's got to go on there. And we don't even want to ask him these questions, right? Nope. Me, Bubba, Luke Tasker. Um, we don't want to ask him these questions. And hes you can just tell what he's answering. He's just like, in his head, he's just like, shut up. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to. But he has to answer, and he's just so pissed. But it's funny because that's my first kind of experience. Of that's great. And like trying to figure out a question that is like just broad enough for him to be like, be able to brush it off and just get out of the interview you know what i mean because you're like Dude, they, this must suck it totally gives me flashbacks to doing tie cats radio on tsn 1150 when austin was the head coach and they would have just like a soul crushing loss on the road somewhere you know he's miserable and yet he contractually has to come on the radio station and he has to talk to us in the post game show and it's like you know he's buried at the bottom of old mosaic stadium in regina and he has a red eye to get out of there and they lose by two because a missed call in the final two minutes and i i remember having that same emotion running through me where it's like i'm not trying to to give you an out necessarily but i just have compassion for the fact that this was a bad night for you and you don't want to be talking to me like you have right. no interest in answering this and in reality it's such a stupid contractual thing that they have to do as well because it's like oh be the first to hear the coach on whatever like whether it's Ty Cats audio network or TSN radio and it's like they're going to answer the same question when they've had a chance to go back and review the game film and actually find out what the real true honest answer is but the value of getting that answer quickly is that there is emotion in the moment it's raw so you get right. their their real true thoughts on it. That's if they want to give you real true thoughts. The problem is 90% of the time in that situation, whether it be quarterback or coach, they usually are like, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm bothered by it. We'll see. But the, I think the reason, and it's good, it's good for the fans. I, I do think you need it because once in a while you'll get that no, this is what screwed us up. And, and they might, you know, it's that sound bite where it's like somebody actually, you know, one of the coaches or quarterbacks is like, I'm going to tell the truth today. Or they just get so fed up with, you know, maybe a couple losses and they're like, no, this is what's going on. And right. they point to some specific so that those fans can look at it and grab onto that and be like, yeah, that is what it is. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I think you need to do everything you can for the fans because they're the ones that are investing so much time into it right yeah the Definitely. players are too absolutely right they're investing their life into it but so are the like the fans are investing you know what they make and and they're showing up and they're you know committing to something that they don't really have to be you know that isn't going to give them much benefit other than saying i root for the tie cats so yeah i think they have to do that oh i agree i, think I agree like, absolutely even, even if it's fundamentally useless it serves a purpose twofold one is to give the fans what they want which is to like if the if the coach doesn't show up doesn't talk doesn't say anything it looks so much worse because at that point it's like well why did i not hear the coach's thoughts immediately on this that's part of his job is to be the front-facing member of the organization and then the other part of that is it helps promote the audio network right like it gives Mm -hmm. you the opportunity to say we've got them but it's also so it's also hard because you know, we always have the saying as a player is the film is never as good as you think and never as bad as you think. Because what that means is what you see and what you experience during the game, you can recall in your head. But once you watch it on film, a lot of the times it might be not a lot of the time, but a good amount of the time, it's completely different than how you saw it. You know what I mean? And, you know, you might sit there and think like, you know, the reason we lost this game is because of you know, we gave up two bomb touchdowns, mm-hmm. right? That's the reason. We, and then you look at it and you're like, oh, no, it's not. Because we had them on second and six, <laughs> seven times at midfield. And, and we couldn't get off the field. And then they kicked field goals. Like, you, it, so 
to get that initial emotion is good because that's what it is. But really, like, you almost want to ask the exact same questions later yeah. because they're going to have a time to review it and realize, oh, shit, it wasn't yeah. what I said. It was something else. But that's beside the point. But, yeah, that was, you know, one of my experiences of, okay, how do I talk to a coach that I have a very close relationship with uh, player coach, right? And, it's a know, fun hurdle to try and figure out how to how to do the media side, but I'm uh, I'm sure you were a pros pro and you did the very best that you could with it. But um, let's get to uh, to our interview uh, with our guest this week, which uh, is somebody who you've you've gone to war with and you've seen have the the ups and the downs, and now has an incredible opportunity in front of him. Who do we got this week? Yeah, we got Nikola Kalinic, which um, you know I I think he. I would say he's a known name in the CFL when yeah. he was with the Tie Cats, right? Like, but he was of that, you know, the the unknown position of fullback. But he was the be- like by far the best fullback in the league when he was playing. He was physical. He's big. You know what I mean? He would just bury guys. Teams knew about him, knew how physical he was, and, and knew what they were in for. And I always said because he's about six four, six five, two fifty, huge. Right, he was actually our backup tackle, like our emergency backup tackle. Really which is wild. He would get reps at it. Yeah, I shouldn't be surprised by that, but yeah, it's that makes sense. Huge, huge guy, but like just so physical and, and really like changed the game for the Tie Cats and Tommy for his offensive play call. But I always said he was a better NFL tight end fullback because he's just more prototypical that way, right? Mm-hmm. So he finally gets a shot after two years with the Cats. He's at, he's at the Colts training camp right now. So. I, I just want to touch base with him because number one, he was an awesome teammate to be around. He's the most, one of the most physical players and just, you know, the, I don't care attitude while he's on the field. He's just a, he's an ass, you know, he's an asshole. You know what I mean? When he's playing and for lack of better word. And I think, you know, I think the NFL is a perfect spot for him. And yeah, I just, I want to watch him make the Colts and I want, you know, people that are watching us talk to to root for him and, and watch preseason because i think he has a i think he has a good shot he's built for for the nfl football yeah i agree in terms of the build and i hope that he gets every opportunity and makes the most of his opportunities certainly because that's the challenge in the preseason is you either make or break on like five reps if you're a low roster guy that's got to prove that you can actually get it done right but the thing i find interesting about nico is that he is as you say like for lack of a better term he's an asshole on the, on the field he is absolutely but we live in an era of professional football and really football at large where it's like being the mean physical guy makes you a villain. That's what football has always been about. And like, I'm, I'm a quarterback and I'm an offensive guy and I love to see touchdowns being scored. And, but I know what football is at its core. It's dudes in the trenches, throwing each other around, making a difference in how the game is played. And so I was always intrigued seeing the conversations that happened around him in his time in the CFL of like, oh, you know, this guy is, you know, he's, he's innately dirty. And sure, he played on the edge, but he was not Garrett Marino. <laughs> like, yeah, and like we there's a difference about between these too. things. But it's, it's this idea that like, well, because he's a big body and he's mean and he throws people around, well, now we get to act like he's Jack Lambert of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, 40, 50 years ago, and he's a terrible person and he probably goes home and, uh, you know, punches children in the face. It's like, no, he's a, he's a mean football player. That's a, that's a good thing where I come from for most of my life. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say mean. Like the thing is, is the world that the you know the pros are in right now mm-hmm. is a lot of them want to be buddy buddy with each other, right? And I talked to Simone about this. We've had this conversation before. Like, there's a difference between being dirty and being physical, right? Right. And he Nico's a perfect example of he is the most physical person on the field it's a great point which yeah. comes across as being dirty because if he listen a good way to finish a block is to land on somebody and stay there so that they can't get up and potentially make a play so not a lot of people do that because they're like oh you know don't, don't want to be mean <laughs> <laughs> i'm wearing helmets and shoulder pads like <laughs> everybody is signed up to be mean against each other yeah. but n- not dirty Right, just the yeah. same conversation and, with Simone. And this is and this is interesting too. Is the idea that like the uneducation of so many people on what is good, hard, physical football and what is dirty? You go to any youth football game, any university game, even in Canada, and you will hear two things shouted out of the stands by angry fans or angry parents: either get him off the field, 
that physical dude is a menace. He's dirty. I can't but bo- hey ref, call the flight. Or you'll hear the other side of people screaming out of the stands. It's football. <laughs> Those are the two things you hear. Dirty, flag them, get them off the field. Like when you finish a block and you lay on somebody, how many parents and fans of a university team and even in the CFL will stand up and point and start screaming as though they're watching a murder in the street? It's like, yeah. uh, guys, the, it's football. It's, and I'm, I'm not a huge proponent of the it's football crowd because they're the same ones who, when you see a dude get a headshot, they're like, hey, football's tough. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. They're ruining uh, the game. It, of football. Yeah. I'm not saying that. <laughs> what I am saying is like, we, we don't have to be absolutist on these things. You, you can pick and choose and find a medium and kind of average them out. And for me, Nico in his time lived right on that edge of, ooh, uh, he's taken these real physical matchups against these guys, but he's also just playing football at a really high level and being, uh, I think, a really solid member of the Ticats in his time there. I, I'll just say this before we get to the interview. I was around the league office when I first heard that he was endeavoring or he was potentially endeavoring for NFL looks. And there were a whole bunch of people who were like, for what? To, like to run around on special teams and like yeah. try and make a living, like basically bashing into dudes that are bigger, faster, stronger, otherwise in the NFL. And it was like this consensus among the people that I had talked to in the second half of last year that he's going to take a run at this. And I thought, I mean, I hope that he's ready for, you know, the kamikaze special teams life because that's what he's going to get. And the more that I think about it, and especially after we recorded this interview, I'm thinking that guy gets an opportunity to do things other than special teams. He's going to open eyes really quickly, like especially yeah. based on what you've said, Mike, about his ability to do more than he was given in Hamilton. For sure. And like, you know, you always just because the thing about the tight end spot is you'll hear like the Rob Gronkowski or the Tony Gonzalez, the, you know, catching, uh, you know, hundred passes a season, but they also have guys out there that are the run blocking yes. tight ends that play years and years and years. And he fits right in there because he is an athlete. He can catch the ball. He, he can do all that stuff, but he is just that much more physical. And listen for, you know, for anyone in the back, office or whoever the heck you were talking about that's like oh why would he do that why would he because he'll make more money (laughs) than he could even know what to do with and he'll make more and and worst case scenario which isn't going to happen but let's say he has an nfl career and then he comes back to the cfl the cfl will pay him more money because he went to an nfl camp and had that shot and they'll be like well, the NFL knows about him. We know about him. So he's going to come back and automatically be the highest paid fullback in the league, or he's going to be in the NFL and make life changing money. So anybody that's like, oh, well, why would they go do that? Why would it? It's, yeah. They're the yeah. same people. They're the same people saying, get that guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the same people. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Uh, start your season off right with products from our partners at Fox 40. Outfit your coaching staff with custom logoed. Fox 40 whistles, gear, coaching boards, and more. Visit fox40shop.com. Use the code CFP15 at checkout for 15% off of your entire order. Here is Nikola Kalinich, formerly of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, now with the Indianapolis Colts, brought to you by our good friends over at Fox 40 on Canadian Football Perspective. Let's just start it like this. Why not? We're already talking about stuff. So the uh, Mike was just saying, like, hey, Felix Ron Goche is playing a bunch. And uh, Nikola, you you were saying, like, yeah, I was at that game. Are you still following this stuff super closely? Like, what's going on? Absolutely, absolutely. Got to keep, got to, got to keep my eye in it. Um, I mean, not, not every game, but, but the games that I get the opportunity to watch. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them. Why not? It's football at the end of the day. It's something that I did not too long ago, and it's something that I love to, love to see. And uh, I have a bunch of friends, brothers, like you could say that, that, that are still playing and. And it's awesome to see, awesome to see, like, I mean, not, not the best to see some, some games, but, but I like <laughs> seeing their success and, and, and seeing them prosper. That's pretty sweet, man. Cause yeah, you're right. Right now, you know, everyone, you know, is on the tie cat. So we know. Yeah. Going well, tie cats or Ottawa. Like, well, that, yeah. So, yeah. That's right. Because everybody I mean, switched over from what you're used to. Ackland, <laughs> Ackland, 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 having a hell of a season, but I mean, it's tough stuff 
My uh, yeah. my favorite thing was him uh, after the I think it was halftime of the of the Hamilton Ottawa game that you said that you were at where Claire Hanna, our sideline reporter, was like, "Hey, why'd you do the mic drop in front of the bench?" And he's like, "Oh, it literally didn't mean anything. I'm just being a shit disturber." He was like, "I'm just having fun." Yeah. And it was like, "Okay, yeah, that that's who he is." <laughs> exactly. I was just waiting for him to shoot the arrow. I was waiting him, <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. I said, "Okay." The first catch comes. I said, "Oh, there he is. There he is." So maybe maybe I'll give a little bit of context of where you are right now. You're you're currently at the Colts training camp. How many days in are you guys right now? Uh, this is week three of training camp. Uh, going into week four, the start of week four. Um, I kind of look at it week week to week kind of thing, but I think it's the third week now, and it's leading up to our first preseason game this Saturday. So. My favorite story of you, and I told you this, like this my this is my all-time moment of of Nico was in Toronto. I don't know if it was your first touchdown ever. It was, but, it was. Okay, so your first touchdown ever. Uh he's playing in Toronto, scores a touchdown. It was on that actually same wheel we were talking about, right? That like sleeper wheel, backside wheel type play. Yeah. And as soon as he scores this touchdown, Marsh. I'm like, we're all fired up because we love Nico after this point. Like, we realized who he is, the type of player he is. And then you look up into the stands, and there are, like, no word of a lie, probably 50 people yeah. with number 84 on. And his buddies are sitting there dancing. But not dancing, like, just for a little bit because he scored a touchdown and they're coming down. Dancing for, like, 20 minutes because Nico's <laughs> going to touch down. They, they did so. That's my favorite. That is my favorite Nico and story. So on top of that, I was are just they gonna all say, coming to your first preseason game? Just before you answer that, I was just going to say in radio, exactly the same. Cause I was calling that game and I remember being like, Oh look, there's a cheering section. And then it was like a commercial break and they're still jumping up and down. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, was, I was like, Oh my God, they're still going. But yeah, I hope yeah. they're coming to your preseason game. Oh yeah, well, a bunch of them went went to Europe. I mean, a bunch of them took took some time off of work, but I think I they got I got about I think 10, 10 or twelve guys that are coming down. They they already got their tickets like a, a month ago. I think it was. They're like, even if you're not gonna be there, like we don't care. We're still going. We know you're gonna be there. Like we know. Don't worry. Like we know you you got this. You got this. So, uh, hope. I mean, I'll be there um hopefully i mean whatever happens happens i mean if i get the opportunity to play i'll, I'll be more than honored blessed happy excited nervous anxious not nervous but anxious um to just have that opportunity to kind of put myself in in and finally and like give back to i guess like what 18 19 year old me coming out of going into college university and being like okay like not knowing what you want to do, but then trying to figure it out as, as the years go on. And then, I mean, it's, it's a longer path than usual, but I, I had a plan and, and then that, that's the thing. I stuck to the plan and, and I got here. So it is what it is at the end of the day and just go out there and give yourself an opportunity. And that's all, that's everything I was ever, ever wanted. Well, because it's funny, your, your story is, you know, going to York, which I don't know. I, I didn't dive deep enough when, when we were when we were teammates there. But was it a not recruited enough thing? Did you not play football enough in high school? No. Was it you just weren't noticed? Because even at York, like it was it was noticeable early on that you were just kind of a difference maker and your skill set was fit perfect for you know really CFL and I would say even more NFL. But it, backing all the way up in order for you to go to York, like that's not a powerhouse by any means. Right. So no. was the recruiting world just not around for Nico or what was it? No, for me, I mean, I started playing football in grade 11 of high school. Um, I played the one year in uh, high school and then right away I was like, Oh, like one of my coaches, he's like, Oh, like you should really try um, doing the community, like reach out to Tobacco Eagles, like give yourself, maybe, maybe give yourself a shot, you know, see what it takes. And at that time I was every summer, I'd be going home back to Europe and Serbia and then spending the whole summer. So that was the first time I actually chose, okay, okay I'm not going to go. I'm going to try it, play football. And then, I mean, after the first game, I think, I think after my first home game, it was like Westerns, recruit at the uh, like recruit at the time he came and gave me his like card and I remember I had that card I think up, up until I got to York 
where it was like even even after that i was like okay like i should probably get rid of this so i like put it somewhere <laughs> at, i'll leave it at home like you know like as a memory but um i had i had i think six or five or six um universities reach out and it actually coincidentally it was it came down to uh york or mcmaster oh and jesus this guy, time, would have, this guy would have killed in max system. <laughs> <laughs> i know man I yes, know. <laughs> and, and at the time i mean it was honestly ended up being i chose york because of of the coaching i think at the time like kamal peterson with his skill set and and what he sold me on it, it was it was undeniable because he was um a uh, receiver coach for team canada uh he had i mean everything that he said he he hit the spot with what i wanted to do and what i wanted to give myself the opportunity to so that's what ended up kind of giving me the opportunity because i mean i didn't really want to I, i wasn't one of those guys that really wanted to sit around and wait and wait maybe red shirt a year get bigger stronger i just wanted to play football like i just wanted to go in and play like if if i lose i lose i mean at the end of the day like you you don't I I personally don't think that like you ever lose but you learn you learn from opportunities you learn what not to do next time or like give yourself another better chance of of winning maybe next time but that was that was my story like KP come out he was he was really the one that that sold me on he's like you could be a really dynamic like receiver at the time a big slot back and I mean for me everything was new because I was like okay well I just want like be a receiver cool like and, <laughs> right, and like <laughs> <laughs> exactly and especially it's like okay i was i didn't really watch football i was a big basketball fan i mean i played volleyball at the time so i thought i was gonna go somewhere with volleyball not not football but then it was just like okay cool like let's uh, let's give this an opportunity and i mean he molded me he taught me everything to do with being a slot back or receiver in canada because at the time he's like listen if you're not going to you're not going to get to the NFL from York like plain and simple like there's a very very low chance unless you right away like become huge you, you become so strong like you, you you're an animal or something like that it's tough like it's going to take um a year and this was more so like i think this is after like my second year because my first couple of years i didn't really work out that was kind of like my achilles heel like i didn't i didn't think i needed to work out i was like i'm good enough like whatever like i i was kind of um nervous to work out because i saw guys that were much smaller than me benching way more than me for reps and it's like okay i put one plate on and it's like okay i get pinned after the fourth time i'm just like what in the world like how does this little guy like bench more than me did i understand the whole physics of it when it comes down to length and arm movement the, mus- the amount of muscles you need to have but i mean and then and then he he kp also he he sent me up with the program i mean he was a prestige like trainer athletic trainer um he he trained uh professional uh, cflers back in the day with mm-hmm. and then that was that was the selling point when it comes down to that but you're like your skill set isn't necessarily based on like yeah obviously you lift more weights and all that kind of stuff is is you know it'll help you but like there's not a lot of people that play the game like you and it's kind of landed you where you are now with the Colts because it's just this like physical like I'm going to absolutely bury you in the ground and not many people have that attitude not even in the pros and you know that there's a lot of soft yeah. players in the pros and you showed that with the Tie Cats but how has it been now? Because, you know, played the CFL a couple of years, the COVID year kind of messed it up a little bit, but played the CFL a couple of years. Now, all of a sudden, boom. So right from York to the CFL, now to the NFL, what is the, what's the difference now? Big time CFL to NFL is, are you still, can you notice that you're still like kind of that bruiser and, and, and able to throw people around and just be more physical or is it like more even playing field now? Um, I'd say I, it's, I mean, I think the NFL is a little bit, a little bit stronger when it comes down to the CFL, but at the end of the day, they're professionals, right? Like the, the defensive ends are probably, they are bigger. The, the D tackles, the, in, the inside of the box is bigger, but even on the out, on the edge, there's like the smaller guys are strong. Like they're, they're very physical. They're very strong, but I mean, my also play type from college, I remember my first couple of years at York, I wasn't so much on offense as, as I was on special teams. So Ryan Carhut, he's, um, he was my, my special teams coach my first year. And like, he 
really like do like pointed me in the right direction of of how to play special teams. It's like, and this is such a fun game because nobody really enjoys doing this stuff, but it's like the dirty work that gets done. And it's just like, that's where like a lot of fun can happen. Um, but when it comes down to the the strength, I guess, between the CFL and the NFL, I mean, there's a difference and, and, and I'm not going to sit here and, and, and say, Oh, it's not a, it's not a big difference. I mean, there's a difference, but at the same time, the rules are different, right? So that yard off in the CFL you might you might get a smaller guy that's much quicker because he needs to get to the quarterback faster because here it's like here it's more so strength because you're on the line the defensive ends right there he's right in front of your face like waiting, <laughs> I, I, I could just for the ball to be snapped and, and I, I can just imagine you Nico with no, like it's, like it's like one, one, yeah it's one of the this. one of the first days where you're inch to inch and you're like oh my hey, hold on, god hold on. This is ridiculous. Is this is ridiculously close. Yeah. What is happening right now? Who is there anybody? Is there a story of a time so far in your NFL experience where you've been walking back to the huddle redoing up your chin strap because you're like, what the hell was that? That dude like I oh, I no. thought I thought I was in oh. control. Like I thought I was no, gonna move. But this I remember dude. No, I but I remember that there was there was for rookie OTAs because we had uh I was with the Colts for nine weeks for during OTAs and we had a rookie mini train uh rookie mini camp mm -hmm. and that's when we like kind of like first like got going or whatever and we went I think we ran like outside zone and and I took my steps like towards the outside and it was just like oh, oh my god but like I kept running my feet and like got myself in good position and I'm just like wow like that's a that's a big difference like it's not it's not your regular steps like you've got to be quick off the ball you've got to anticipate the snap count almost and there's no like room for error when it comes down to putting your foot into the ground getting it up down like having that second step with power like timing your punch like there's there's so many things that that it's just like you gotta get used to it and kind of prosper and, and get stronger and get better when it comes down to footwork and timing so that's like the one big difference that I've probably seen with compared to the CFL. And and how has, you know, just in general, I guess, how has camp been going for you? Like, is it, you know, are, are you catching up pretty quick though? I'm sure the rookie mini camp was helpful, but you know, are, is it going well for you right now? How, how do you feel it's been going? Yeah. I been going really well Luckily, like my receiving knowing all that the stuff that I learned in college actually helped me I think because in Canada I wasn't really being used for the receiving game I was more so for the That's blocking right. game so I, I've had experience when it comes down to run blocking and now it's just adjusting some splits some timing I just making slight adjustments but another big thing was the playbook the playbook is now all of a sudden instead of maybe needing to and pass concepts I need to know I don't even know how many pass concepts I need to know everything. Like I, you could be put in this position or that position or this position. Like, so learning the playbook has been probably the most challenging thing when it comes out to the, the how I've adjusted, but I think it's going really well. Um, day by day, taking it, like trying to get better, just, just getting a little bit better every day has been kind of my motto when it comes down to how to, how I can, put myself in the best position to make this team or, or help this team become better. The, the playbook's that different, eh? Like, like in comparison to CFL, so it's that much more different. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot more thinking when it comes down to it, because I mean, in Canada, we were just running, we would call one play and that was it, you know, whereas here it's like, we'll call one play, but then we can also have a kill to it. So then all of a sudden, it's just like you need to know the two plays. And then depending on how, how they're playing the first play, let's say the quarterback doesn't like it, he kills. And now all of a sudden you're thinking, OK, I need to know that second play right away. Like there's no there's not really any room for there's no time for you to wait and then be like, OK, I got this play. OK, well, here, there. No, you got to you got to know it. You got to you got to get going right away and just be prepared. And that's been that's been the toughest thing, especially coming from. I mean, learning the defenses and and now all of a sudden the defense has one less guy. I get out on the field. I'm like, wait, what? This huddle looks a little bit small. feels a little bit smaller. Like I look out there and I said, isn't there a guy missing or something like that? Like, and <laughs> just like, oh, yeah, like, okay, come on, get your head in it. Like, but the, the playbook it has just been, I mean, 
I never really had to learn a lot of the past concept in Canada. I mean, I wasn't running um, post routes ever. I wasn't really running that many corner routes ever. I ne- never really was involved in that game. I was I was more more so involved in the run game, which actually benefits me now because I don't have to. I mean, learn. I mean, there's there's plenty to learn, but. I, they're, now it's just adjusting to to the play calls, right? So it's adjusting to the runs because we ran this in Canada, we ran this here, we ran that. It's like, okay, but now it's just a little bit different. So you're actually getting like like pass routes now, like because listen, I and I always said this to you, even in practice, and you know when you'd catch some passes in a game, you have made like I know you didn't get a lot of balls thrown to you like in comparison, but you probably had. I would say top three hands on the team when I really? was playing with you. You should have seen some of the catches this guy made in practice constantly in, in you know, yeah. in traffic, whatever it is. But, man, they, you're right. They just, in the, for whatever reason, now do you think that was just like the offense you were in? Because I really see that as a trend in the CFL in comparison to the NFL, where it's just like, don't we have this fullback in? They are doing nothing else but blocking yeah. or in pass pro. Like, we are not going to throw it to this guy maybe once a game on some sort of, like, scrape or, or you know, check down, and that's it. But in the NFL, yeah. you look out. The NFL, you look out, and, like, a key formation is let's split the tight end out wide, and he'll run ISO routes against a, well, a guy. And I mean, like, I, I laugh thinking about the Indianapolis Colts in terms of the tight end position because Dallas Clark spent, like, what felt like 40 years just, like, running five yards and going, da, 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 and then running, like, an option route on a linebacker. But um, what is the, what's the uniquely NFL pass concept or the route that you have learned or that you're picking up that you've really been intrigued by? Because, like, when I think of a guy, your body, your speed, the hands that Mike is talking about, it's like the Gronk stuff where it's like hand in the, in the dirt, outside release, and it's basically like you get to seven yards and you snap your head and Matty Ice is putting a ball right into your face mask. Like I could imagine you doing that in the preseason game this week, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the, the toughest route that I've really had to deal with, I mean, in Canada, uh, since the field's so much wider and so much bigger, we always ran routes with a speed cut. Mm. In was a speed cut. Corner was, I mean, not a speed cut, but – you you stick that with one foot and get going but the, the biggest difference is probably in cuts like uh the 12 yard in cut in, in america i mean that's not a that's not a speed cut anymore it's a, it's a chop chop like it, i mean you're you're stuttering your feet and that's been kind of the big difference i think that i've had to adjust to when it comes down to the the route concepts but luckily i mean i've also had nine weeks with with the colts to to get better myself in the in the weight room and and i've seen drastic changes i mean i feel faster i'm running faster i feel quicker running making breaks not that not that i've reached where i want to be but it's it's in the right step of of getting better and that's like one thing that i've 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 really improved on is is my strength physically but also my my running i mean you know, my 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 combine was a four nine nine. I I just grazed that that <laughs> that five second, which I always, which I was telling everyone. I mean, every every I'm coach that it. I had an interview with, I'm like, oh, what are you what are you running at the combine? I'm like, what I'm running under five seconds, that, that, and that was the one thing that I never. I mean, back in the day, I never had hamstrings. Like you look at, like I would look at myself and be like, what? I swear, like got like sprinters, like oh, they have hamstrings. I'm like, I don't have that. Now it's just like, okay, well. I kind of have, I see, I see you, like, I see Nick, Nicola, like, okay, like, you're getting better, like, but the chop chop has been, has been tough, like, and just getting the footwork and, and getting your feet up and down, using your hands, and, but other than that, that's been, that's been really the, the tough difference, other than that, it's, it's been pretty much smooth sailing when it comes down to, to the past concept, with, when, with the route concept, route tree, sorry. Yeah, like, so, did you lean up, did you do anything different off-season wise? Um, you know, once you realize, okay, I'm on the Colts, so you, they're going to give me an option. Like, did you do anything different? Did you change anything up? Or did you just kind of like say, okay, no, I, I have my, you know, my pro mentality down of how I'm going to work out? Or were you like, you know what? No, this is now an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm going to have to go over this place or this location to do it. Did you change anything up before you went? Um, No, I, I don't think I changed up that much. I mean, before uh, I got to, I went to OTAs, I was training with, uh, come out peterson at athletic paradigm and he really he really helped me when it comes down to running routes and giving me that footwork opportunity we were up up in 
Vaughn training on the field, uh, I think it was two or three times a week. Um, but when I came back from OTAs right before um, training camp, they gave me everything. I mean, they told me, they gave me the workout, they gave me the running program. And I was just like, okay, well, just follow it. Like, you, all you have to do is, like, if everything's given to you, like, you just got to follow it. Like, you don't, you don't have to do anything more. Like, just do what you need to do and then and then make sure you you correct what you need to correct i mean they they want to they wanted to see me improve my shoulder mobility which i i improved a little bit but still there's still more more room to for improvement and just slight things like that like ankle mobility and and like uh squatting deeper like having the hip hip mobility as well and and that was the, the big thing but other than that i mean i trained at my condo um, luckily, luckily in, in Etobicoke, I, I live in a pretty good condo and, and we have like this CrossFit gym, but we also have a regular gym. So the oh, CrossFit right. gym was, I was, I was in the CrossFit gym every day for, well, six, six times a week. So. <laughs> so the yeah. best condo in Etobicoke or what? Yeah. Two different gyms in it? Jesus. <laughs> <Bar> Lake Shore. <laughs> <laughs> What's and exactly. so just for, I guess, my curiosity and, you know, maybe other people are, but what's the difference between like camp schedule in, in CFL and NFL? Because I, at least for people that don't know in the CFL, it's, it is all day. You wake up in the morning, you're out there for, you know, four, four and a half hours. And then after that, it's, you know, meeting, you get a little bit of a break, eat some food and then right back into meetings all night. Is it very similar, very typical, or is it kind of switched up a little bit? So we haven't, um, all the, all the vets have been saying how like, this is probably one of the best schedules that they've seen ever, um, uh, because, because the Colts really emphasize on recovery. Um, and I believe this is like the nice. first year that they're really, really emphasizing on the rest and recovery and giving, giving players time to, to get their bodies right. But at the same time, it's like, I'm doing extra. I'm not, I'm not just, okay. I'm lolly gag. I'm not, I'm going to chill. I'm going to lay in bed all day. It's like, okay, get a nice tub. Like, do the contrast, hot tub, ice tub, like therapy, Norma Tex, uh, workout, even even if you're tired, like make sure you're getting a workout because you want to stay in shape and be the best that you can be, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, the schedule, the schedule is pre pretty much pretty similar other than we haven't, like we don't have two a days. I mean, I remember, I, I believe we had like a practice in the morning and then a practice in, in the afternoon with pads, I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think they would do pads in the morning, no pads in the afternoon. They'd no pads in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So we have something similar. We have like a walkthrough period where, like, we'll have like, like, sort of like a practice. It's not not really practice. It's just a walkthrough. Go through the scripts. Go through some some plays, and then and then we'll have like a break in between, and then we'll have the practice afterwards, and then meetings afterwards. But we finish we finish, I believe, before seven every day, almost every day. So it's been it's been pretty smooth, and then we get going. I think around I think we have walked through usually at nine nine forty five a.m. So it's been it's been really smooth sailing, and I mean the rest and recovery. I mean you can't you really can't complain when it comes down to that. Just getting yeah, the body okay. right, right, having the sleep, and and being able to 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 think and and get in the playbook, like learn stuff. So well, and that's what people don't realize either. Um, you know, kind of the way it's going now is. It's not necessarily the like, okay, we're going to try to completely beat you down to get you ready for a season so that you're, you're broken by week one. Right. But any, yeah. so I guess, you know, kind of to, to finalize this out because I'm going to be watching, do you know how much you'll be playing? Uh, in the no, first I, I haven't, game? I haven't been told anything. Um, I mean, I, I think you could, you could see, you could expect to see me on special teams um but where on special teams i don't know yet so and right is now that, is that all similar so i know you talk about the playbook difference between offense but what about special teams because at least with the with the tie catch we ran a similar to pro style protection so is that very similar like they're kind of doing the same very thing? similar i mean the footwork is i mean when it comes down to being in the box the footwork's the exact same which which i'm like okay thank god we had jeff reinbold <laughs> constantly being on our ass being like okay <laughs> get, get the footwork like get the point like no we're blocking because it's the same here and and here it's actually you have no room for error like if you don't know your point if you don't know the footwork if your footwork's not good 
if your your hips open up like you can get swum swum someone can swim you very easily compared to what it was with the yard off but yeah, that's right. it's been that's it's right, been pretty similar out there. yeah exactly it's been pretty similar minus the fair catch that that uh, that's still still new to me so so I'm sure I'm sure I'll get, I'll get used hey, to that. Really he first day he's slowing down. He's like no yards, no yards, no yards. <laughs> I was gonna say I yeah, I exactly. feel like the concept of the fair catch doesn't really match with the way that your mind works from all of the years that I've seen you play football. Like no, I'm ki- I'm kind of no. terrified you're just gonna run through a mother effer's face on the first chance you get in a preseason game. <laughs> He like times it up perfectly, just runs right yeah. through the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's been kind of like it's kind of tough too because it's just like I'm, I'm, I, I'm that type of guy when 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 it comes up when it comes down to fair catch, it's like ah, oh, that's a shame. Like I, I'd rather <laughs> be able to get downfield, like do this, do the shuffle to to make the tackle, or like just be involved, right? So it's been I couldn't but, imagine I mean, that. I couldn't imagine that going down and like, you know, 90% of them are fair catches and you don't get well, to what, actually finish the play. What I don't get, Mike, yeah. is is the idea of like, you are busting your ass. You are, <laughs> you are in a, literally, you're in a fist fight while sprinting. Every single time you're going down the middle of the field, it's a war zone around you. And you have to see when a little guy 40 yards away goes, yeah how how do you do that but i mean i mean they have people like we have got like gunners in the nfl are are usually guys that get paid to to be gunners right so you got guys that are paid to to to, and they know their job they do their job very very well because those guys have that one specific job for 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 the most part not a lot of guys but some guys have have that just that role of being a gunner and and he gets paid just to run down make sure that that guy's getting calling it a fair catch but but i don't know like we'll see that really honestly like we haven't we haven't had like full down like run down the field and and oh it's a fair catch kind of in practice but we're we're sprinting down and and we're we're practicing as if he's returning the ball so i mean my, so my oh, favorite yeah, thing I, in camp, i guess maybe we'll get used to it <laughs> my favorite thing in camp and nico you've been a part of this is when they bring all the americans in the first day and they teach them the Canadian rule. So they show the no yards. They show the, uh, you know, the kick in, kick out team trying to save the point. And everyone's minds are blown. I'd imagine yeah. that you didn't get any of those videos where it's like, hey, Nico, just so you know, the difference between the CFL and the NFL, they're probably yeah. just like, nope, you should know absolutely everything. And we're not telling you anything different. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the, at the, at, for for the most part it's it's about the same rules minus like i guess the whole fair catch like but at the same time it's like if if he's running i, I mean he clearly didn't didn't call <laughs> fair catch so but, if but he's running, it comes I'm down in. to all those the rules it's just getting used to it um seeing seeing like the ball kick i guess it, it's about the same like i mean it's it's much different i mean telling my friend my friends here that have never heard of the CF or have heard of the CFL, but like didn't know the rules. Like I'm just like, oh, like there's a five yard halo. They're like, I hate what's a halo. Like, what do you mean a halo? I'm like, well, he has to catch the ball and he has to return it. And they're like, what? Like, right. oh my god! Like that. That sounds like fun. Like that sounds like like there's a lot. I'm like, yeah, it is fun. <laughs> it's it's really fun if if you're if you're going to tackle him. I mean, maybe it's not as fun for him, the guy returning sometimes, <laughs> but what it is and but then it's just like okay seeing i mean i know that there's no rouge anymore and i joke around with with jordan murray being like oh like we'll be playing madden and and today we were playing madden and i missed the field goal it was a long field goal and it went out the end zone i was like where's my rouge point where's my rouge point that's a joke (laughs) he started dying of laughs they're like this isn't canada anymore i'm like i know i'm just joking i'm just joking oh man that's awesome well Listen, man, I do want to appreciate you coming on here because I know Cam's a, you know, a grind and you try to get to sleep when you can. But it's nice to hear that they're taking care of you because, I mean, yeah. that just help you so much. But, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing you preseason, whether it's on special teams, whether it's getting some reps in there and just absolutely blowing people up. But I want to say – I do want to say thanks for coming on, man, while you're in camp because I know that's quite the yeah. commitment. So, uh, I appreciate it and, you know – I, I want to see a Colt pretty much all season long. So I'm looking forward to it. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys too so much. Thank you guys for having me.